This is a reality for a lot of people. The majority of us have been through this at one point in our relationship or relationships, or maybe you might be going through this right now in your current relationship. You say to yourself that this is not the person that you originally married. Or you might say, this isn't what I signed up for. And we usually say this when things have gotten really bad in our relationship. We feel like we've changed. Maybe we grew up, maybe we matured, but our partner hasn't. And I wanna talk about what this means and maybe give you guys a different view to look at how you can actually change yourself in this ever-changing and growing marriage. What's good y'all, it's Hashi here. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. And if you are new here, welcome again. And in all of my videos, I am basically giving you marriage advice. It's advice that I wish that I would have had getting married twice and what I wish that people would have told me before I even hit having problems in my marriage, or at least told me the, the problems that I'll probably have in my marriage. But either way, I am here to help you get through those problems and hopefully help you get your marriage back on track. So kind of what I said in the intro, when you get to this point in your marriage, you could have grown. Maybe you've been with your spouse since you guys were teenagers. Maybe you got married when you were 18, 19, 20 years old. And now here it is, maybe you're 20 years later or 15 years later, even five years later. A lot of the stuff that you guys might have been into when you were younger, you're no longer into those things. Maybe you met your spouse at a club. You don't enjoy clubbing anymore, but your spouse still likes the club. Maybe you met somewhere else and there's certain things that, you know, as you age, things change. Your hobbies change. What you're interested in, your interests, they change. So the things that might've been appealing to you when you were younger, as you get older, they're not gonna be that appealing to you, but your spouse may still enjoy doing some of those things. Now there are two ways, two ways that you can go with this. One, you could say, we're not compatible anymore. We're not the same anymore. This marriage needs to end. Or you can go the other way and you can actually look at your relationship in a new light. Most of you are going to take the first route. You're just gonna say, we're not compatible anymore we don't like the same things anymore. There might be some things that you want your spouse to stop, but if they enjoy it, why would you want them to stop it? You're going to just end the relationship or the marriage because you're no longer compatible. Uh, as it is, what is it, irreconcilable differences? I probably said that word very wrong. But basically, you're just not compatible anymore. And a lot of times what you do first though, before you just end the relationship is you're gonna ask everybody around you. You're gonna ask your friends, you're gonna ask your family, you're gonna ask maybe his friends and family, and everybody is gonna validate that choice for you. Why? Because you are actually just looking for that validation. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for people to tell you that you're making the right decision. And sadly, most people will tell you that if you end the relationship, you're making the best decision and you're making the right decision. But my question to you is how have you changed? Just because you're not into clubbing anymore, why should your spouse stop clubbing? Now, if your spouse is going to the club looking for other things than just maybe hanging out with his friends or just having a good time, then yeah, you probably have some other problems in the relationship. But if your spouse is just going because they like going into the clubs for whatever reason, then why would you want to stop them from that if they like it? And if they're going in there by themselves, I might question it. But if they're actually just going with their friends and they're hanging out with their friends, then let them hang out with their friends, especially if their friends are like younger than them. Their friends might still be into clubbing or if their friends are single, their friends might still be into clubbing. So if they're hanging out with their friends and they're not thinking anything else of the club, why would you want to stop them from having a good time. You wouldn't want your spouse to stop you from having a good time if you're hanging out with your girlfriends. So if you ask your spouse and you're just saying, look, I'm just hanging out with my friends, I'm having a good time, try to incorporate some ways that you and your spouse now can have fun, even if it means not going to the club. Your spouse have to have other interests than just partying and hanging out. And sometimes we get uncomfortable with change. We get uncomfortable with the fact that either our spouse has changed or even that we've changed. But change is inevitable. We will all change. That is the one thing that we cannot stop is change. Now, if you look back five to 10 years and today, there's no changes, something's wrong. But you should not be the same person that you were five years ago, 
10 years ago, hell, even one year ago, you should not be the same person. And you also shouldn't want things to stay the same. Some people will tell their spouse that they want things to go back to the way it was before. I hate to tell you, but things are not going to go back to the way they were before. Especially if you had any issues in the marriage, you guys got separated and came back together. The marriage is gonna look and be completely different. And you have to learn to be able to navigate this new relationship. Even though you might be married to the same person, it's a new relationship now. And my personal opinion is, I think that's why a lot of people are suffering in their relationships because maybe things changed that they didn't want to change. Or maybe it's they wanted things to change Things have changed and now they feel some type of way, like they feel weird, weirded out, or maybe now they're just like, you know, they wanted things to change, things changed, and now they're just like, this is not what I imagined. This isn't the change that I thought was going to happen. And even if you believe that your spouse hasn't changed, I can guarantee you that they have. Even if you may be like, my spouse always wants to party. We've been partying since we were kids and they still want to party. Their partying is going to look a little different. They changed in some other aspect and you have to recognize those changes. If you look at your relationship with fresh eyes, you have to get to know your new spouse. And that's why I always talk about just checking in with your spouse all the time. But even if, like I said, you think that your spouse has cha hasn't changed, in some ways they have. It's just looking at your relationship with new fresh eyes. Looking at your partner as if they're a stranger and you're getting to know them again for the first time. And a lot of people don't wanna do this because they're just like, I've been with this person for years, they should know me or I should know them. Even if you've been living with that person and you're with them all day long, you never really know your spouse. Because like I said, their, interest, their interests change. If they had a job change, that's a change. If, if their hours change, even though it's very simple and very like, you know, minuscule on other levels, it's still a change. And it's still something that you should always check in with your spouse. And even if you've changed, Get to know your spouse as the person that you are now. Try to understand why they want to party all the time. It may not be that they want to relive their glory days. It may be they just want to get out the house or they want to get away from you. And if that's the case, there's a lot more going on in your relationship than what you think. But talking to your spouse about why they have, always have to go to the club, why they always have to drink if that's a problem for you. I've known my husband for, I wanna say 30 years. It has to be over 30 years. We've known each other for a very long time. We just haven't been together or married that long, that, that long of a time. But we've known each other since school. And every day, I still learn new things about my husband. Because as he gets older, his hobbies are starting to change. His interests are starting to change. The things that he's into, he wasn't into them, you know, in his 20s. It seemed like every 10 years, really, his interests change, sometimes sooner than that. But it may be one minute he was into this type of car, now he's into this type of car. Or before he was all about, I'm gonna pay somebody to do this, so now he wants to try DIY projects. You know, it. it's just that even in an old relationship, oh, old relationship, you still have to get to know your spouse. You can never stop getting to know your spouse. One thing I also want to add is, you know, because a lot of people, I think that's a problem with their spouse always going out. Maybe they feel like they're going out all the time because you're not giving them attention anymore. You know, when you guys were together, when, when the relationship starts, we put all of our attention on our partner. We want to know everything about them. We read our spouse, we read our partner like a book. And a lot of times, once we feel like we've gotten to know that book, what do we do? We put it away. It's just, it sits collecting dust on the bookshelf. You can't do that to your spouse, but people do. And their spouse is sitting there collecting dust because they're a person and not a book. They start seeking attention elsewhere because maybe dynamics have shifted 
in your relationship because now you might have kids. So your attention diverts from your partner to now your children. And your partner might feel some type of way about that. Even though that's their kids, of course they're gonna love their kids, but they still might feel some type of way that, man, we used to talk, we used to do all this stuff together. Now that we have kids, all that has stopped. All her attention has gone to the kids. And your spouse is sitting there like, what about me? And a lot of us, we just think that all we have to do is as we get older, we have to buy a house, pay bills, take care of the kids, and that's our life. And then we forget all about the little things. We forget about what brought us together. We forget about how our relationship grown, the things that we've done to keep our relationship fresh in the beginning. And we forget about all of that. We forget about having fun. We forget about our dreams. We forget about our goals. And then sometimes we put this fantasy in our head of who our spouse should be. We create a character of our spouse when that's not truly our spouse. Our spouse is not that character. We have our I, we have this idea of when we get married, when we when we have kids, when we buy a house, this is what our life should look like. And a lot of times it doesn't. And then we're upset because our reality is not our fantasy. And if you really truly want your marriage to work, you have to accept your partner for the person that they are today. There are other reasons why you should get out of a marriage and that I'm not gonna go into in this video because that's not what this video is about today, but, but you will not find the person that's in your fantasies because it's a fantasy. And even if you, let's say you leave your relationship and you go find someone that's close to your fantasy person, we're still flawed. Humans are flawed. And there are still gonna be some things that you're not gonna like about this new person. And then you're gonna start comparing your relationship, your new one to your old one. People who have been in relationship for years, and I mean years like beyond even 20 years, people who have really truly been in relationship for the long haul, they understand that their relationship is ever changing and they constantly get to know their spouse. If something new happens in their spouse, in their uh, spouse's life, they're constantly like, how do you feel about this new thing? What's going on with you in this new thing? You're constantly, as I say, checking in. I know one thing that I've stopped saying is, I know my spouse. I still say it sometimes, but I do try to even watch myself when I'm saying, oh, I know my spouse. Because I've come to find out that my spouse isn't as predictable as I thought he was. And sometimes my husband still surprises me with the decisions that he make. Because we've been together for so long, I'm thinking like, I know my spouse. I know what he's gonna do. I know what he's gonna say. And then he'll do something and my jaw will completely drop because I'm like, that's to me, I say that's so out of character. But it's just, he found a new interest and he wants to pursue that new interest. And when he has a new interest, I'm talking all about it. Like, I want to know why he chose that certain interest. What was it about him? What was it about that thing that attracted him to that interest? If if this if it's something I don't know anything about, like I'll ask him like, what is it? Like, I'll ask questions. I may not be interested in that thing, but I'm interested in my spouse. I'm interested in what my spouse is doing. I'm interested in how my spouse is feeling, and I'm interested in what my spouse is thinking. So that's how I show my interest. When he has a new interest, I'm interested. And sometimes just showing interest in your partner can completely change your relationship, especially if you've never really shown interest before. Let's say your spouse likes to play games. Maybe you're not a gamer. Maybe you just, you think that gaming is a waste of time. But have you ever sat down and just watched your spouse play a game? Have you ever actually sat down and asked your spouse why they play those games? What is it about this certain game that attracts him to it. There's a million games out there. Why'd he buy this specific one? And try not to do it in like an interrogation way. I know sometimes if you're just constantly asking questions, it can seem like an interrogation, but do it in a way that you actually are interested and don't necessarily be interested in the game itself, but you're doing it to, be in to show your spouse, hey, I'm interested in you. I'm interested in what you like to do. Even if I don't understand anything about gaming, why do you like it so much? What is it that makes you like playing these games? Practice curiosity in your own relationship. So doing a little recap, cause I feel like I've said a whole lot. You may think your partner hasn't changed, but they have. You have to see your partner for who they are today. Talk to your partner as if you're meeting them for the first time and then decide if you like them or not. <laughs> and if you should stay or not. Because sometimes our relationships do change to the point that when two people evolve 
differently, that's usually when we see marriages break up. They may have changed, but they didn't change together. They changed and they evolved it in a way that the marriages don't work for them anymore. But make sure you make that decision yourself and don't make that decision through the eyes of someone else. I hope this video brought you guys value. Don't forget to get my free guide, how to not get divorced. I actually updated the guide. I cleaned it up, I laid it, made it look a little bit more sleek and I wanted to actually give you guys some actionable steps within the free guide to truly help you guys and really give you some steps to be able to start changing your thinking process. The tips that I gave in the one before, I just kind of gave the tips in a blurb and these tips were used, that I used them to start changing my thinking and some of my habits that I was doing inside of my marriage. But I wanted to actually give you guys some actionable steps, some something that you can do today that can really help you change the state of your marriage. And I also decided to write an ebook. The ebook is $15, you don't have to get it, you have my free guide. But it talks, it goes a little bit more in depth with things that I don't talk about in my free guide. I talk about growing apart, I talk about budgeting and money, I talk about arguing is not communicating, I talk about lack of sex, I talk about other difficult things that can happen in the relationship that's out of your control and how that to change the dynamic of your marriage. I talk about setting foundations. I talk about emotional safety. I've been talking about emotional safety in a lot of my videos lately, and I go a little bit more in depth with emotional safety. And I also talk about charting the road ahead. And of course you have my free videos here on YouTube. You guys don't have to get the the paid book, my paid ebook, but I do hope that you guys at least get the, um, the updated free guide that I have. Like this video if you like it, subscribe if you wanna see more videos like this, and remember, love yourself, adore yourself, and always be yourself. Thank you, and I hope I get to see you guys in my next video.